Hey, what's up, guys? It's Zero to Nine back with another tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about a very technical subject. We will talk about oversampling and why you need it in your projects to increase the audio quality. First of all, uh, let's be honest, we all love saturation and with very he heavy saturation, uh, we can get aliasing artifacts uh, which can be reduced by oversampling. So it's very important to know how oversampling works and where we need it. First of all, um, let's start with a little bit of basics. Um, I hope uh, most of you know the basics about uh, sampling uh, digital audio and sampling rates because um, all this topic about oversampling is uh, related to uh, sample rate and um, for example here in my project i always use a 48 kilohertz sample rate and there's something which is called a nyquist theorem and it basically says that um, for sampling a specific frequency your sample rate needs to be uh, twice as high so that means with uh, a 48 kilohertz sample rate the maximum frequency we can sample is actually uh, 24 kilohertz and uh, so the next question is uh, what will happen with frequencies uh, which are above the nyquist frequency which is in our case 24 kilohertz and i will show you a graphic so you can really easily understand and see what happens with frequencies above uh, the nyquist frequency so um i have uh, this uh, little picture here and uh, in this specific example uh, we're trying um, to sample two different frequencies the first one is a one kilohertz uh, waveform and the second one is a seven kilohertz waveform in this specific example um, we're using eight kilohertz sample rate um, and that means we have eight thousand samples uh, per second and um, in this case you can see these red crosses and each red cross uh, represents um, a sample point uh, which afterwards is used for recreating the analog waveform and if you look closely you can already see um, that the red crosses are exactly like the same points um, so even if the frequency here is uh, seven times higher we still have the same amount um, of sampled uh, points and uh, in the next picture we will see what this actually means and what's the result of uh, the sampling and here we can see that this is the digital representation of the analog waveform and both look exactly the same so it's a one kilohertz waveform and so the question is uh, we wanted to sample the seven kilohertz waveform but we ended up with getting a one kilohertz waveform and the question now is why um, as i already told you um, the maximum frequency uh, we can sample with a specific sample rate is half of the um, sample rate so in this case the maximum frequency we can sample is four kilohertz so that means the seven kilohertz waveform is above the nyquist frequency and we cannot sample it correctly because our sample rate is just too low and what will happen is we get something which is called aliasing um, or uh, mirroring and um, if you have frequencies above your nyquist frequency you get a kind of mirror effect so these frequencies will get mirrored down into your frequency spectrum uh, which you're able to sample so you get a kind of wrong representation of your actual waveform of your actual waveform so um, in this case we're using 8k uh, sample rate so the, that means uh, the nyquist frequency is 4 kilohertz um, so um, the 7 kilohertz waveform is 3 kilohertz above the nyquist frequency and will, will get mirrored down at the nyquist frequency so, so by three kilohertz and what does it mean if you uh, just use four kilohertz a nyquist frequency minus three kilohertz above uh, means that the final result is a one kilohertz waveform instead of being a seven kilohertz waveform and that's the basic problem um, of of just of sampling audio digital audio and um, we have to uh, be aware of that fact 
and uh, I will show you um, how this also looks like um, if you use distortion without and with oversampling. Uh, here we have a like perfect example how it would look like if we have a two ki uh, kilohertz sine wave and then we uh, use some distortion on it, then it will uh, add some harmonics. And uh, that's a good thing because that's why we use saturation to add harmonics. And that's the perfect case where it's perfectly fine and it looks uh, uh, very clean. But um, if we now use like heavy um, saturation, but we don't use uh, oversampling, we get something like this. And here you can see that we have a lot of frequencies uh, around um, the fundamental and the harmonics. And this is all the like shitty mirrored frequency content uh, above the Nyquist frequency. And that's uh, called aliasing. And that sounds uh, not very pleasant. And uh, that's also the reason why uh, digital saturation sounded not as good as analog saturation for a very long time. Um, but nowadays uh, we can fix this issue um, by using uh, oversampling. Um, so we will increase the range of frequencies we can sample and, um, and then we just downsample it. And in the downsample process, we will just uh, cut off all this very high frequency content. And so we don't get the aliasing. And I will just show you a quick picture. Um, how oversampling in a plugin works. Um, so in this uh, example, I've, I've uh, copied here a graphic um, from the documentation of a standard clip, which is uh, my one of my favorite uh, clippers. And uh, uh, here in this example, you have a upsampling algorithm at the input um, of your plugin. So the first uh, thing, thing what your plugin does is it, uh, it upsamples the signal to a higher sample rate and then internally works with that higher sample rate. And uh, at the end of the process, it will downsample uh, the signal again to uh, the same um, sample rate you're using in your DAW. Um, and um, with downsampling, um, it's uh, you're using uh, the downsampling algorithm uses a very steep uh, low pass filter at the Nyquist frequency or a little bit uh, before it to cut all the uh, um, frequencies which are higher than um, the Nyquist frequency. And, and with this way, you get rid of all the uh, content uh, which you can't sample anyway. And that's what uh, reduces all this aliasing. And I'll just quickly show you uh, this in Ableton um, so we can see uh, what actually happens and how all of it works. I've already loaded up a spectrum analyzer so we can see what really happens. Um, here we can see this red line, which is representing the Nyquist frequency, which is uh, 24K in my example. Um, I've loaded up an operator instance playing a basic sine wave. So if I just play it here, You can see it's just a basic uh, sine wave uh, with just a fundamental frequency. And now I will uh, show you different saturation plugins and I will uh, enable and disable the oversampling option. In Ableton, uh, most uh, saturator plugins uh, have an option for oversampling. So if you click, uh, right click here, on the plugin, you can see there's a high quality setting and that's basically oversampling. So uh, I will just uh, um, play it here and you can see the differences it makes if oversampling is enabled. And uh, specifically look at the kind of aliasing artifacts around the fundamental and the harmonic frequencies. And I will also show it in the spectrum analyzer. So yeah, you can easily see it, um, that all these aliasing frequencies um, are getting a lot louder if I uh, disable uh, the, the high quality option, which is oversampling. And this is basically what oversampling uh, does. It helps you to reduce the aliasing artifacts in your sound. And that's why it's important uh, that you use it for heavy uh, saturation.
And the same with the pedal plugin. You can see it's pretty clean. Yeah, here it's really obvious and uh, that it helps a lot uh, to use oversampling to uh, reduce the artifacts. Uh, the only downside uh, with the Ableton plugins is that you don't really have control over the amount of Ables, uh, oversampling. It's probably just uh, two times or four times oversampling, which is enough for most cases, especially if you're just uh, driving it a little bit and not completely like I do it right now with uh, full um, distortion all the way. Um, uh, you, for example, the Saturator plugin, uh, you can see uh, if I enable high quality again, uh, it introduces some latency and the pedal plugin has a little bit more latency. And I think that the pedal plugin probably uses uh, more oversampling than the saturator plugin. And that's why it's also a little bit cleaner with the high quality setting. You can see that it's really clean and only has the harmonic frequencies from the saturation and um, no uh, uh, audible uh, aliasing of and, uh, artifacts. And uh, but with third party plugins, usually you have more control, you can uh, select different oversampling factors. For example, with one of my favorite clippers, which is standard clip, um, we can use uh, a lot of uh, different uh, settings here. So we can go with insanely high oversampling factors, but usually that's not really necessary at a certain point. Um, the aliasing artifacts are so low in volume that you can't hear them anyway. Um, so uh, what I will show you now, I will just play the sine wave again and then I will increase the oversampling factor and you can see in the spectrum analyzer uh, that the aliasing artifacts gets lower and lower in volume as I increase the oversampling factor. So uh, yeah, it's really obvious here, but um, I'm clipping a lot here. Uh, so it adds really a lot of distortion. Uh, but even here you can see that probably at eight times oversampling is already good enough. So uh, that the artifacts are so low in volume, you can see it here on the scale. It's so uh, low in volume that there's not much any difference. Um, but in any case, uh, if you want to use higher oversampling factors because you have a lot of distortion or you want just the best quality um, in most third party plugins, you can uh, select a higher oversampling factors um, like 8 or 16 times. Um, and yeah, let's quickly talk also about the downsides of oversampling because oversampling is really helpful uh, to reduce the aliasing artifacts, but it also has some downsides uh, and basically it has two downsides. The first one is it introduces latency. So uh, you can see it also here in the plugins if I hover over them. The, the saturator uses, uh, introduces a little bit of latency, just 0.08 milliseconds, which is basically nothing, but the pedal already has 1.8 milliseconds and the standard clip 1.3 milliseconds. So you have just to uh, know that it introduces latency, but latency is usually only an issue when you're recording or playing live instruments. If you, for example, already mixing a track or mastering a track, latency is not that big of an issue. Uh, but just so that you know, it introduces latency. And the next thing is that it also is uh, pretty heavy on the CPU. If you use higher oversampling factors, especially like eight or 16 times, it's already pretty heavy on the CPU. So if you use multiple instances um, of the, the plugin uh, on several buses or sounds, then uh, it may uh, uh, put a lot of pressure on your CPU. So that's just uh, what you have uh, to keep in mind. And uh, some plugins like Standard Clip, they have a very cool option because you, for example, can here set our, our lower oversampling factor like two times uh, for online rendering and a higher 
factor for offline rendering. So that uh, just means online rendering is when you're just uh, playing yeah, the audio in your DW and offline rendering is if you're exporting your track. And so um, CPU uh, is not really an issue when you're exporting because then it just takes maybe a minute longer or something. It doesn't really matter. Um, you want the best uh, quality possible if you export the track. So I can just select a higher oversampling factor for my export. And I wish uh, more uh, plugin manufacturers would add an option uh, for something like that um, because otherwise you always have to switch it um, from lower sampling rates to higher oversampling factors. Um, when you're exporting and it's uh, annoying uh, but this really helps to keep the CPU low uh, while getting the best result when you're exporting. So yeah that's uh, I think the most important points about oversampling. I hope you understood how it works and why you need oversampling and uh, what happens with uh, heavy saturation um, that you will get uh, aliasing effects and oversampling can help to reduce them. Um, if you have any questions, just put them down in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial. Have a nice day. Bye bye.